Now we're ready to add the title of our book and the author's name. So when we work with the type tool, it actually creates a new layer for the type and it creates it based on what you have selected in your layers panel. So at this time I have gate one selected because that's the last thing I worked on was resizing my picture of my gate. So I actually want to go to the top of my stacking order. So I'm going to select my flowers layer and now when I start working with my type tool, the new layers that are created are going to go above flowers. And then I can always adjust those later if I need to. But since this is the title of the book and the author's name, I do want them in front of the graphics that I have already on my cover. Okay, let's change our workspace to topography. I'm going to click Window, Workspace, and select Topography. This resets my panels. I'm going to change my Tools panel to double wide so we don't have anything cut off. And you'll notice on the right hand side of my screen now, I have my character and my paragraph panels in a grouping. And then below that, I have paragraph styles and character styles. This is a new feature that you can now create styles for paragraphs and characters. You're probably familiar with this if you've used InDesign or even Microsoft Word, where you can create a style for a character or a paragraph and be able to reuse them. And then if you go back in and make any changes to that style, anything that has that style applied to it will automatically update, which is a real nice feature. Okay, I'm going to select my type tool and I'm going to point and click on my canvas in front of the door and I'm going to type the secret garden. And I'm going to press my return key or my enter key at the end of each word so that my words are stacked one on top of each other. Now before I click outside of my text and commit to it, you'll see here on the options panel, we do have the option to click our check mark or press our not sign if we change our mind. We're not going to do any of that yet. We want to highlight our text, click and drag to highlight it, and we want to make it larger. So let's try maybe 36. That's a little small. Let's go a little bit larger. Let's try 60. Now we don't want to keep playing with the size of the font too much at the beginning because the style of font that we choose can influence the size of the font. Okay, now we want to pick a font. I'm going to click up here on the menu for our fonts. And remember, this one's being designed for children of elementary age. So when we were brainstorming, we had considered possibly a blocky font or a font that may have looked like um, handwriting. So as you can see on the right hand side, next to the names of our fonts, we do see sample fonts showing us the style or the appearance of the font. Now keep in mind, the font can set the tone of your document. It can influence a reader by the appearance of the font to let us know maybe the style of the book. You've probably noticed this when you're reading magazines or looking at articles, that the style of font can really influence, before you even start reading anything, can influence your feelings behind what you're about to read. So a more professional font, you're going to see those on business cards. And maybe a more casual font, you might see in some styles of magazines, depending on the, the type of article. But when we're looking at news magazines like Newsweek and Time, you're going to see something that's probably a little bit more clean and crisp because of the style of writing that they're using. Okay, this font is Giddy Up. And we can see it's a little scrolly and it's young looking. But kids our age might have a hard time reading that because it's not your standard style letters that they may be used to. So again, if we scroll up and down on our list here, we can explore some different fonts and see what kind of feeling that we like that it's evoking. That's Gabriola. And you may not have some of the fonts that I have. Here's a good old Comic Sans. I'm sure we're all familiar with this one. And that's many times used in with children in mind. You probably noticed it probably in the comic strips. And down here, let's see. That's pretty blocky. So again, I mean, you can explore all day trying to choose a font that you like. Here's one that kind of gives the hint of almost going to be cursive. But again, it's the print version and there is one that's a script version. Let's go ahead and go with Comic Sans since I'm sure that's a standard font for everybody and it does look like one that you might see for a younger aged person that it would attract them. Okay, the other thing we want to look at is the color. I'm going to click on my color picker, the set the text color box here at the top 
I'm going to pull this off to the side so I can see it at the same time. And what I like to do when I'm actually designing something is consider what other colors are already in use in my document. So this will help bring in repetition, which is one of your design elements that people encourage you to use because it helps the reader or the person that's looking at your document start to see how things go together and it makes them more comfortable. We start to pick colors that don't make sense with our picture. You can see how it kind of starts to stand out and it's more abrupt. And depending on what color you choose, it could actually make your person feel uncomfortable when they look at it. Oh, orange actually looks kind of good here, doesn't it? And it's picking up the colors from the brick. Another thing you want to be cognizant of when you're designing is how your foreground color, in this case my text, looks on the background where I'm placing it, in this case the green door. Some colors don't work well together and it can actually cause the letters to appear as if they're moving and can bother your reader when they're looking at it. And you can usually counteract that by adding a stroke. So I think I kind of like this orange color. Now we could actually bring our color picker over to the brick and pick up a color directly from the brick and you'll see that the colors are changing in my color picker window. So if I wanted to, I could actually pull a real color out of the brick that I know actually exists. Or again, once I'm in that area of that color, I can start to click and drag and adjust my colors. And you can start to see when I get the wrong shade of orange, it doesn't stand out as well against the green and it kind of gets a little blurry. I would say brighter is better. And again, this one, the orange is a little off with that green background. I think I did better before I started looking at the brick. That one looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Now if you want to match mine exactly, you can actually type in the hex number that you find next to the pound sign. So that's F99020. I'm going to click OK to accept that. And I'm going to go back to my text size and see about size 72. See if that works. And I think it will. So I'm going to go ahead and click my commit key, my little check mark. And I'm going to get my move tool and I can adjust this inside the door. And that actually, that color complements really well with the door and makes it stand out. Let's grab the text tool again and add our author's name. So I'm just going to point and click here towards the bottom. We can always adjust it later. And you'll notice that the font has stayed with the last setting. So it's got the Comic Sans and it's 72 points and it's orange. And again, we can adjust that later. So the name of the author is Francis Hutchinson Burnett. Okay, now obviously I'm going to have to make that smaller. And we'll even see if I spelled it right. I'm going to change this maybe to size 14. That's way too small. Now, an author's name is not that important for a young child as it is for someone who's older who starts to find authors that they like and they start going back to them. So I would say at this point the author's name, the size of it being larger than the title or more prominent the title is probably not that important because of the age group that we're designing for. Now I'm going to change the style of the font because it is the author's name and I want it to be different from the font used on the title because I want it to stand out differently. So let me try Franklin Gothic Medium. I just want something that's a little more trimmed down and more professional looking. We'll see what this looks like. And let's change the color maybe to just a light green. And let me click OK and get my move tool. And I'm going to move this down here at the bottom. And let's see if I spelled it correctly and I believe I did. Okay, so now we can tell that we still need some work. We might need to go back and edit some of the text for color or for the style of the font. But for now, this is a nice place to get started. So we've got the title here in the center and we're using that as kind of proximity because the title is the most important part of the book. So we've got it with the door as part of the proximity and design principles because the door is a key element in the story of the book and the fact that it's locked and it's what makes the garden a secret.